Dear all, welcome to the Koch University Libraries event on behalf of the 56th, 58th Library Week. I am Daphne Gyer, Koch University Anamed Libraries Branch Librarian. As Koch University Libraries, we are delighted to host this event entitled Collaborations of University Research Libraries. In today's world, we realize more and more the importance of collaboration between institutions. And today we have three distinguished speakers, Ibrahim Farah from Balamand University in Lebanon, Sebastian Herr from the American, uh, from the American Academy in Rome, and Sezin Romi from SALT in Istanbul, who will introduce us important collaboration examples among libraries such as Hermes, Urbis, and Bibliopera, respectively. Before starting to introduce our speakers, I would like to inform our audience that today's event will be in English, and currently there is simultaneous translation. To access the translators, please click on the interpretation link below and choose the Turkish channel. We will have three speeches at the end, and at the end there will be a Q&A session. Please uh, type your questions in the chat, and you may also type your questions in Turkish. Also, at the beginning uh, of your questions, please type the name of the person that you are asking the question to. Last but not least, this event is being recorded. Afterwards, you may be able to watch it on Sunakraj Library's YouTube account. At this point, I would like to introduce you our first speaker, Ibrahim Farah. Ibrahim Farah is an instructor of library information science and a public services librarian at the University of Balamant in Lebanon. He has a master's degree in library and information science from Wayne State University in Detroit and a diploma in human resources management from the American University of Beirut. Farah is an experienced lecturer in library science with a focus on public services, resource sharing, referencing, and copyright, in addition to strong education and profession experience in managing academic libraries. Farah was a former member of the IFLA Document Delivery and Resource Sharing Committee. During his term, he collaborated with committee members in different projects that include the RSCVD initiative and the Erasmus Plus funded project Hermes. At this presentation, he will introduce us the Hermes project, which had an enormous positive impact during the COVID pandemic. Dear Ibrahim Farah, the floor is yours. Thank you, Daphne, for this introduction. And uh, thank you for uh, the Turkish librarians who hosted me in this event. Uh, I don't want to say Turkish or Turkey, I will say Turkey because the name has changed officially now. So let me share my presentation uh, and start talking about Hermes. Okay. Please let me know if you can see my presentation. Yes, we can see. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so I will be talking today about a project that started uh, around a, a year ago. It was initiated by the uh, IFLA Resource Sharing Document Delivery Services uh, Committee. It's called, the, it's called AMS, Strengthening Digital Resource Sharing During COVID-19 and Beyond. Okay, so first let's start. So, okay, so let's start with this quotation because it is, we are living in a time of war and we need to reflect a little bit about education and war. So this quotation is by Maria Montessori, the well-known educator who created the modern education. Uh, so le let me quote her. Everyone talks about peace, but no one educates for peace. We educate for competition, and competition marks the beginning of all wars. When we educate for cooperation and offering each other solidarity, on that day, we will educate for peace. So this is just for you to reflect about it. I don't want like to, uh, to uh, talk more about it, but it is very clear that cooperation is what we should educate for. So what, what do you think all these tools or all these projects have, have in common? We have Google Maps, Google Translate, Wikipedia, Zenodo, 
directory of open access journals. What do they have in common? The, all, the, the thing that they have in common is that they are all built on collaboration, okay? Wikipedia is the largest online encyclopedia in the world, despite all the controversies, but it is the largest encyclopedia and the most used encyclopedia in the world. It is built on collaboration. Anyone can go write an article, add an article. We collaborate, the, the whole world collaborate to create an encyclopedia. Same for, for Google Maps, for example. Google Maps uh, can tell you the tiniest store in the tiniest village in the world where it is located. Not because Google Maps has a lot of employees or it is very, very smart, but because people collaborate to Google Maps to make it more successful. And same for all the other products that you can see. So collab collaboration is a, is a main component for success uh, in this world. So we are living in a global village now, so we need to collab collaborate together. So what about universities and collaboration? Universities are builders. We all know that universities, they build, we build. We build uh, employees, we build entrepreneurs, we build new generation. In many communities, also universities are a large job base. They constitute a large job base. They are also the catalyst of development. All, the, all new initiatives, all new inventions, they start in universities. They have the infrastructure that fosters creation and growth, either through research or collaborative projects. So uh, a university infrastructure is built to foster creation and growth, to foster, like to, to, to nurture new ideas. So these are all point of strength for the university. Uh, from here, the importance of col collaboration between universities and other uh, institution is very important. Uh, we need to build a strong network that include peer universities as well as companies and organizations to share knowledge and expertise. So uh, one small example is when, when university collaborate with organizations, they can produce better uh, products, okay? Uh, what are the benefits of collaboration between universities? Interacting with researchers having a global expertise in a specific area, of course. So when, you, when you, we interact with people from different institutions, we gain credibility, we gain more expertise, we get new knowledge. Also exchanging resource, resources, including databases, equipment, staff, and study population. So uh, when we put our, our uh, tools together, we can produce better work. Acquiring credibility through the name recognition from a prominent researcher, department, or institution. So when we, when we work with prominent universities or prominent people from, from well-known people from different universities, we, we gain credibility. So, so when we use their names, when we work together, they, they give us more credibility. Also, team working offers new perspectives from different parts of the world, thus avoiding the problem of academic inbreeding. Uh, you know, you know that the, the problem of academic inbreeding is a very important problem in academia because, as you may know, for example, someone studies in a certain university, then they get their PhD from the same university, then they are full-time faculty in the same university, and they collaborate with the same people from the same university to produce research. This is what we call academic inbreeding. So we are reproducing ourselves. So when we teamwork with other, with other institutions, we are, we are avoiding academic and reading when we are bringing new perspectives to our work. So this is just a brief introduction about the importance of collaboration. Now I will introduce AirMass and how it was born. So let me start with the timeline, what happened and how we got into AirMass project. So we, we all know the problem of COVID-19. So in 2020, the world went into a lockdown due to COVID-19 and libraries were forced to move exclusively to the web. So uh, especially Italian libraries, they, they were very hit. They, so people were not being able to access the print collections, for example, so in some parts of the world. Uh, in April 2020, uh, the resource sharing during COVID-19 initiative, received initiative, was born. And I'm, I know that most of you are aware of it because you are very active in this uh, initiative. So Received was born. It was a, an initiative by the Resource Sharing and Document Delivery uh, Committee, IFLA Committee. Okay, so what was, uh, how, how Received work? Received was a collaboration 
a voluntary collaboration contribution of hundreds of libraries around the world. So it was created by uh, the committee, but the collaborators were librarians from all over the world that they agreed to share information. So if a library was open in another part of the world, they can provide to a library that is closed or to patrons that are not able to access information. Uh, after the success of received, uh, some members of the committee, uh, we discussed to apply for an Erasmus Plus fund. So we applied for an Erasmus Plus fund and we got a funding of 200,000 uh, euros to uh, further develop received. So Hermes was a project funded by the Erasmus Plus uh, uh, fund to further de develop, develop receive uh, and to keep it sustainable and free of charge. So we want receive to continue as a sustainable uh, software, as a sustainable service that is free of charge, free resource sharing service. What is the philosophy behind Hermes? So as I said, Hermes is, uh, is a project to sustain receive, to, to continue with receive. So uh, you all know that we have multiple resource sharing platforms around the world. We have OCLC, we have uh, um, Rapid ILL. We have a lot of uh, resource sharing platforms, uh, free or commercial. But Received was the first free of charge that is geared by volunteers. It's not a company. It doesn't belong to anyone. Okay, it is an initi initiative. And the, the people, the, the working force and Received are uh, volunteers. And this is the strength of the, of the project. And, and covering the whole world, actually. Through RMS, resource sharing libraries are aimed to build on received and create a worldwide service that is first open source. So RMS, we got the fund, we got the fund to, to work on RMS project in order to create a better service to ameliorate received. We want it to be open source where anyone can use the software, anyone can, can download it and use it, free of charge, no uh, money transactions are involved in any process and customizable. So the software that we, we are working on can be customized according to the local need of a certain community or, or a certain consortium. The partners are coming from mainly from Europe and from the Middle East. So uh, the leading partner is uh, CNR Bologna, uh, the research uh, institution in Bologna, Italy. Uh, also IFLA is a partner. From Turkey, we have MEF University as a partner and University of Cantabria in Spain, in addition to the University of Balaman in Lebanon. So we have five partners in RMS. Mission and vision. RMS project aims at providing educational institution with high quality, fast, and free access to knowledge. So we, we want to, to create a, a, a service that is free of, free of charge, accessible by everyone. Uh, implementing and sharing a comprehensive vision and widespread competencies on resource sharing through publication and training. So one of the, the, of the missions of RMS is to create a uh, comprehensive vision about the, the concept of resource sharing. So for this reason, we created a publication. We are in the process of creating a publication that can be used by resource sharing librarian ar around the world. And it will be followed also by training uh, sessions around the publication and the best practices in resource sharing. In addition to building an open source system to support effective access to knowledge for all. So in order to, uh, for, the, for sharing information to be effective, we need to have a uh, good software. So we are building an open source system uh, to support this uh, mission and vision. So output one, the first output of Hermes, public, uh, of, of Hermes project is a publication. The publication is a wide reflection on the meaning of resource sharing and practices. So we created a publication that covers the meaning of resource sharing mainly, involving the worldwide information community, fostering the emergence of common perspective. So trying to create a, a common perspective of resource sharing and will be disseminated, disseminated worldwide and used as training material. So uh, the, soft, the publication will be uh, disseminated on a large scale, and it should be used as a training material. So we, we will base all our trainings on the publication, on the finding of the publication. It is composed also of six, six chapters tackling different subjects, uh, resource sharing current environment, national and international systems, copyright and licensing, content access, operation management, and a manifesto to set a few future directions. So we are currently uh, finishing the first draft. 
Uh, the software what, uh, is what we call Talaria. Talaria software, uh, the name Talaria is coming from the wings of the, the god Hermes, the wings of the, of the sandals. So Hermes is the god of speed or, or delivery, and Talaria are the wings that are on the sandal of, of Hermes. Uh, this is from where the uh, we got the name. So the, so the existing received system is based on Google Sheet. The received was, uh, we, we, we created the initiative very fast and we based it on Google Sheets, which is working, but we need a better software. So we need to create an open source management software that will serve as a platform for, for the received community. It is also designed to be used by other consortium or local community. So uh, the software will be the, the base for the received uh, community, for the received network, but it also can be used by any other local network for their own uh, research, resource sharing activities. Dear Prime, I would like to remind we enter to the last five minutes. Yes, okay. One minute, I guess, yeah. So developers are now trying to incorporate ISO protocols for interoper interoperability reasons. So we are trying to uh, incorporate new protocols or ISO protocols uh, so it can be accepted worldwide. Uh, third, uh, the third output is training. So creating a set of distance and face-to-face -face training initiatives. Uh, the, last, uh, the first training we made last week, we finished it last week. It was uh, done in Hashitepe University. It was very successful. And then uh, new trainings will follow, other trainings will, will follow. It will be addressed to the educational community like teachers, researchers, and students to strengthen their competencies in searching and retrieving quality academic documents, as well as learning about the concept of open access and copyright. And also we will give some trainings for professional librarians to uh, teach them about the best practices in resource sharing. So can you help? Of course, you can help, anyone can help. Uh, and any successful service is built on contribution. So by contributing to receive, you can strengthen the, the service and make it more powerful. So as I said before, Wikipedia is powerful because it has a lot of contribution. Now we have around 100 library and received and we can be more. So when we, when we ask library to join, then we can provide a better service and we can keep it free of charge. Uh, if you want to help, you can reach out to, your, to Turkey's uh, representatives in the project, Ertugrul uh, from MEF University or in the DRS committee, uh, Ms. Tuba Akbay Turk, uh, Chanak, and Feliz Ekingen Flores Mamondi. And no need to mention that uh, Turkey has now uh, the highest uh, number of uh, contributing uh, uh, libraries and received. So we, uh, the highest number of libraries working received are from Turkey and they provide for the whole world. So uh, this is all about Hermas. Uh, this is only a question. We, we, we, we can discuss it later on during the Q&A session. So what are the main challenges you face during international projects? Of, for example, if you, if you are doing an international project, what do you consider as a challenge for you collaborating with international people? And finally, this is uh, the page for information. MS website is mentioned as well as my contact information. Thank you for listening. And I hope that I made it on time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, dear Ibrahim, for, for this very informative presentation. It was perfectly on time as well. Um, and I'm glad we will have uh, various questions at the end. Thank you. So now I'm passing uh, to our second speaker, Sebastian Herr. Uh, Sebastian Herr is the Drew Hines librarian at the American Academy in Rome with oversight over the Academy's library and archives. Her uh, holds an MA and PhD in comparative literature from the University of South Carolina and a master's in library science from the School of Information at the University of Texas at Austin. Prior to joining the American Academy in Rome, he held responsibility for Widener Library's Western European collection at Harvard University. Previous to Harvard, he served as bibliographer for English and Romance languages and literatures at the University of Chicago. Hal is the recipient of academic and professional awards and an active promoter of open, open source software in libraries. He is a member of the COHA Gruppo Italiano and also serves as the steering committee of the network of Roman research libraries, URBIS, and the Art Discovery Group Catalog. Today, he will share with us his experience with URBIS. Dear Sebastian Hell, the floor is yours. 
Thank you. Thank you all, all of the participants and, and for the presentation, Ibrahim. And uh, so I particularly thank Devne and Gier and Irem Üna for the invitation to this event and for this opportunity to present uh, Orbis Library Network. It's both a pleasure and a privilege for me and the Orbis Network to be able to participate in this 58th Turkish Library Week. And I should share my screen so you can see my presentation. Okay, good. So what is ORBIS or uh, what does the acronym stand for? So ORBIS is the Unione Romana Biblioteche Internazionali Specializzate or the Roman Union of International Specialized Libraries. ORBIS is a network of 22 libraries located in Rome, Italy. Uh, which includes notable Italian and religious institutions, and virtually all of the libraries of the foreign academies in Rome, in addition to specialized libraries such as ECOM, the International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, and other specialized libraries in Rome. The focus of the institutions participating in the network is on the humanities, and with particular strength in the history of art and architecture, cultural heritage and preservation studies, and the classical studies. The libraries are listed on your home page with direct links on, on, on your home page, on the home page of the Orbis project on this slide. And uh, the names of these libraries include direct links to the institutions and to their local library catalogs. So I'm not going to list all of the institutions, but they're represented on the slide. And we're, in addition to the 22 participants that we currently have, uh, we are in discussion with an important uh, academic library in Rome. And so we hope to soon be able to increase this number to 23 participants. And we already provide access to over 3 million unique titles. So these are 3 million deduplicated uh, resources available via the Orbis catalog. Because Orbis is a dynamic network that continues to grow and evolve, and we invite academic libraries in the humanities and the social sciences in Rome, who are not yet part of the network, to consider joining. The main objectives of the Orbis project is visibility and enhanced access to the participants' collections and their services to scholars in Rome and internationally, as well as to provide a network of libraries with similar and complementary collections to foster collaboration between our institutions. The three main keywords describing the objectives of the network are visibility, access, and collaboration. So Orbis was launched in 2015 by the following six libraries. But the roots of Orbis are in the Orbs network, which dates back to 1992. So Orbs, the predecessor of Orbis, was launched in 1992 and based upon a single ILS shared by participating libraries whose number fluctuated over the years. In 2013, the original Orbs network that once counted the Vatican and all major foreign academies in Rome had been losing participants over the years including the Vatican and the largest foreign academies as the underlying technology, a single traditional ILS shared by all participating libraries, was no longer technologically up to date and did not fulfill the legitimate requirements of greater independence and flexibility by all participants. At the time, Orbs was also based upon a proprietary system that was expensive and difficult to manage. So in 2000, 13, it was simply time to find a more flexible solution that would provide participating libraries with complete autonomy, that would be able to ingest disparate forms of metadata, ranging from Mark 21 to Unimark, in some cases CSV files or other formats, whichever metadata format that the participant libraries were able to provide. And that would be cost effective and ensure that even the smallest libraries could participate. The challenge of the Orbs network was to accommodate the very different aspirations and budgets of a large and heterogeneous number of libraries, ranging from large research libraries with a 
professional staff and know-how to smaller collections managed by, sing by a single librarian sometimes with more modest budgets. And again, in 2013, the 12 remaining uh, URBS libraries started a discussion and series of retreats to jointly decide about the future of the network. So this discussion was facilitated by Professor Paul Weston and Dr. Giuseppina Vullo of the Library Science Department at the University of Pavia. The decision emanating from these discussions was to implement a discovery tool that would permit to ingest the different metadata formats of the various libraries and to select an open source platform to reduce cost and enhance flexibility. The principles leading to the creation of Orbis in 2015 were maximum flexibility of the system and complete autonomy of the participants. An organizational structure that is derived from the new flexible system and not the opposite. Reduce costs to permit the maximum number of libraries to participate. These principles led to the selection of the open source discovery tool ViewFind, coupled with an open source deduplication program named Record Manager, developed by the National Library of Finland. And in 2015, under the patronage of the International Union of Institutes of Archaeology, History, and Art History in Rome, Urbis was launched by a nucleus of six libraries. These libraries were the Academia Belgica, the Academia di Danimarca, the American Academy in Rome, the British School at Rome, the Ecole Francaise de Rome, and the Svenska Instituted Iro. These libraries decided to carry out the project by signing an agreement between them and stipulating a contract with a local software support company, MLB Soft, for the construction and maintenance of the platform. So why did we select ViewFind? Number one, we wanted an open source system as the previous proprietary system. Uh, we had increasing uh, well, licensing costs rose every year, and we had to install a client and pay a license fee uh, for every new staff using the system, as well as for every new module that we wanted to implement. Thus, the system was cumbersome and costly. For the continued viability of the URBS network, it was very important that the new URBIS project be flexible and sustainable, and that it matched the limited budgets of even the smallest participating libraries. We wanted a new, enhanced, and techno technologically up-to-date solution, but without pricing anyone out of the network. We also wanted a stable and mature product that had proven itself, as well as had to have a choice between support companies and the flexibility to be able to change support company if necessary. An active community that keeps the product viable and integrated with other open source tools and plugins, and finally, we wanted a system with successful implementations whom we could reach out to for advice or whom we could emulate. So some of the institutions at the bottom of the slide uh, might have moved on from ViewFind since 2013, but at the time ViewFind was very successfully impl implemented by some of the largest research institutions internationally. And we were particularly impressed by the FINA network which had implemented ViewFind and developed the Record Manager plugin to deduplicate holdings of the Finnish National Network of Libraries and Archives. We also had discussions with the systems librarians at the National Library of Ireland and the University of Chicago, and ultimately selected ViewFind as our discovery tool. Hand in hand with the selection of an open source system, we chose to streamline the Orbis administrative structure. It was important that the new Orbis project keep costs as low as possible, uh, again, so that all libraries could afford participation and that the project remain attractive and constitute a good, a good investment over time. And for the new Orbis project to be successful, we also had to convince potential new participants to join. So to reduce costs, the six libraries that started the project served and continue to serve as coordinators for the project. The only costs incurred by participants are the actual costs of entering one's data in the initial phase. Um, and so, so these, are, these costs vary from library to library and, and depend according to the complexity of the mapping of their metadata to Mark 21. So, the, so this corresponds to a one 
uh, to a one-time setup fee to integrate a library in the network. And then there is an annual hosting and maintenance fee, which is shared equally among all participants. Because there's a one-time setup fee and an annual maintenance fee, uh, which are the only costs of participating in the network. A hosting and technical support contract with MBSoft is annual, and we are not bound as in the case of the proprietary software. If we feel that another software program or another support company would better answer the needs of the network, we can change software and our support company. Any library can join the project at any time at a prorated cost. And so if a library joins in May, it only pays for the months of May through December. And this is also an important point. Any library can also leave the project from one year to the next by giving three months notice. Finally, each institution remains the sole owner of its data. Uh, this point may be less important in an age of open data, but it remains an important issue for some libraries and stresses the fact that Orbis is not imposing any restrictions onto the participating libraries and that Orbis is as nimble as possible. There are no rigid structure. There is no rigid structure. There are no technological restrictions or bonds that tie us to one vendor or another. Orbis is a network of libraries who have decided to work together on a joint catalog and common projects, and we can change technology, software, and support company as deemed best. Based upon these principles, the Orbis network has grown from six libraries in 2015 to the 22 libraries uh, we already looked at earlier. And hopefully 23 libraries very soon. So Urbis future projects are to expand the range of catalogs present. So we, we, we look forward and we seek to continue to increase membership and to integrate them with other types of resources. In particular, we would like to better integrate the various libraries digital collections and to continue to improve functionality. And uh, so we're adding one more library currently as we're speaking, and we're also working on a new graphical interface that will better present all of the libraries and enhance uh, access to digital collections. And Here's so I'm... Sebastian. Oh, yep. Yes, that that, this is the end. <laughs> so I look forward to questions at the end. And uh, there's also the contact information for the network and for myself in case you would like to reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, very informative uh, presentation. Uh, I'm sure there will be some questions um, asking more details about, uh, about the network and, um, and its current functioning. So now we will pass um, to the third and our last speaker of the day, uh, Sezin Romi. Sezin Romi is the senior librarian and archivist at SALT uh, in Istanbul. In addition to managing the library, she carries out the necessary processes for the research and access of art archives at SALT Research. She was also involved in the research and visualization of SALT's diverse projects, such as it was a time for conver conversation from England with love and history of the painting and sculpture museums association. Having collaborated in the research processes of SALT's various e-publications, Romy is the co-editor of Ismail Saray publication, and she will now introduce us the Beolu Research Center's network, Bibliopera project. The floor is yours, Susan Romy. Many thanks, Tese. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Anama team for their kind invitation and organ organization of this event. Uh, when I was invited to explain Bibliopera, I went through all the documents and emails in my archive. They are dated back to 2014, including the preparations. Dear for Susan, the can... I can hear you. Can you hear me, Defne? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay. There was a little, there was a little um, connection okay, there. Let me repeat. No problem. I, I am repeating starting from the beginning. Uh, when I was invited to explain Bibliopera, I went through all the documents and emails in my archive. They are dated back to 2014, including the preparations for project proposal, technical specifications, as well as meeting notes and other details. They prompted 
me to do wider reading and think about the collaboration in libraries further. Now let me share my screen for the presentation. During this presentation, I will uh, try to, I will try to explain the formation of Bibliopera on behalf of my colleagues and try to examine the importance of collaboration between the libraries. Bibliopera brings together the collections of 13 libraries in Beyoğlu, Istanbul. The project was initiated under the coordination of Koç University Sunakraç Library and its partnership with Istanbul Research Institute. They invited these libraries to pars participate in the project. There were, there were seven libraries at first, and then new libraries were added to the network, and it reached 13 libraries today. The idea was to share resources of these research libraries through an integrated web portal and enable user circulation among these libraries in the same district in Istanbul. First, in 2014, we received a form to be filled out by each library. We were asked, asked, to, asked to declare this information to understand the scope of the project. This information includes number of the items in the collection, monthly user, stat user statistics, information about the user's profile, user analytics, number of fellowships. The project was named the project was not named during that period, and it was defined as digital pl platform of research libraries in Beolo or web platform of research centers in Beolo. Contributors, uh, contributors collaborated to write a project pro proposal to be applied to the Istanbul Development Agency. The application was accepted to be supported by the agency the same year, and partners began to work closely to make the project alive. The process to figure out the structure of the website was begun. The project was launched in 2016. Partnerships are crucial for libraries to successfully meet the needs of their users and support their aims and objectives. There is always more than one way to look at an issue or problem and the collaborative process will involve input from a range of people with a variety of different backgrounds. Collaboration helps to avoid duplication of effort and provides more efficient, efficient workflows and activities. It also increases the visibility and influence of the library and library staff internally, externally, beyond the existing user base. Jeremy Atkinson explains the benefits of collaboration with these sentences in his article, The Power and the Challenges of Collaboration for Academic Libraries. Benefits of Collaboration. The collaborative process allows for wider and deeper input from people with a variety of perspectives, expertise, and experience. This helps to develop a more complete, complete picture of the area and a richer service for the users. Collaboration can provide efficiency savings, streamline work processes, and free up staff time for more value-added activities. Collaboration can help to change the role of the library in the university or institutions and move it beyond the traditional client service model. A more joined up service delivery is developed. The points of contact for users are minimized through the development of integrated services, single user interfaces, single input of data, etc. The development of digital, to digital tools and technology play a role in the transformation of collaboration, collaboration model, model methods in the libraries. Before these changes, libraries were sharing their resources by borrowing and blending, blending printed materials. With, with support of information technologies, the ideas of collaboration and its ways move from a print to a digital environment. Collaboration provides more efficient sharing options, so it plays a very important role in the field, field of library and information centers for resource sharing. The, so, the consortium 
has been one of the basic concepts in the field of library collaboration since the half of the 20th century. It aimed at choosing, purchasing, and implementing the same integrated library system. Research centers and library have, libraries have failed to meet the user demands as the number of international publication increased, and this, in turn, has forced them to share documents and develop common collection. It also paved the way for consortium collaborations, interlibrary loans, document delivery, the uh, interlibrary loans, document delivery, the establishment of union, union catalogs were also among the may, uh, main activities of consortiums. In other words, library consortium would be the coming together of libraries to achieve a common goal that is beyond what an individual library could achieve on its own. Web portals are becoming an increasingly important component of consortium, similar to the Bibliopera examples. Bibliopera brings together collections of 13 libraries together virtually and presents an integrated online catalog for the users. Focusing on diverse disciplines such as history, art, architecture, archaeology, literature, and urbanism, the portal presents around 500,000 printed materials with digital collections, of consist digital collections consisting of over 2 million digital objects. It is, it is accessible universally, universally free of charge. The data is updated regularly to present the recent acquisitions of each library. The website presents sections such as news, dis, dis, uh, digital collections, publications, fellowships, libraries, and events. Apart from presenting the search results, the portal also aims to keep the users informed regarding the new arrivals as well as recent events organized by these libraries. Collaboration under Bibliopera also plays a role in the collection development policy. By not acquiring the publication, which already exists in other libraries, it avoids space problems, provides efficient budget management and user circulation among the libraries. Collaboration also aims to support research activities, begin new dialogues with staff members, and provide an exchange of knowledge. Apart from a web portal, Bibliopera also created smaller groups of staff members with different task forces. One of them is the management of social media accounts. The content for social media accounts is created by each library and the process is coordinated by this group. Each institution prepares a list of posts to be published monthly. Bibliopera also aims to organize events under this collaboration. Library tours are organized every library week. In these guided tours, contributors visit each library and get information about them on site. We couldn't organize these tours since 2020 due to pandemics. We hoped that we will be able to continue these tours next year and organize new events under this collaboration. On the other hand, Bibliopera is a great opportunity for continuing dialogue for the libraries and librarians. It provides interaction and enables librarians to collaborate, learn, and exchange. We hope Bibliopera network evolves, reaches more users, and continues to support research-related events. I would like to conclude, to conclude my presentation with a quotation from Henry, Moore, uh, Henry Ford. Coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. M many thanks for, uh, uh, for listening to me. If you have any questions, I will be happy to reply. Dear Cezanne Romy, thank you very much for your um, presentation. And uh, now we will pass to the Q&A session. Dear audience, you may type your questions in the chat. And um, when you are typing your question, please uh, 
refer to which speaker you are addressing to, or if it's the three of them, please state that. And you may also type your questions in Turkish. Um, there will be a simultaneous translations for the Turkish questions. So there is a question for all the three speakers. I would like to start first with this question. This, this question comes from Tuba by Turk. Thank you very much for introducing these three projects. I have two questions for all three presenters. What qualifies a collaboration as a successful one? How do you assure the sustainability? So we can join those two questions and I would like to start uh, with Ibrahim Farah. Uh, thank you, Daphne. And thank you, uh, Sebastian and Susan for the wonderful presentation. I have a weakness for the Oglu uh, uh, quarter. So I have, I like the project so much and the name is very, is wonderful. Biblio is from the French Bibliothèque. So <laughs> I, I need to know who, who named the project. So. <laughs> Uh, to answer uh, Tuba's question, I think the last uh, the last uh, slide of Sezen's uh, presentation is a start to answer the question. So coming together is the hard, the first step actually, and we need to know how to continue together, how to, to uh, keep it, how to be sustainable. So I guess a project, in my opinion, a project is deemed uh, successful when it creates a shared meaning among all the partners. So when we have, when it has an impact, on the on population or on users from different uh, from the different uh, part of the project, so from the different partners, then we can say that it, it is successful. Uh, it should be mutual. It should create a shared meaning. And for sustainability, I guess uh, in any project we need to have a leader. So uh, I, and I'm talking about RMS and receive because I I have expertise in them. So uh, creating an independent steering committee is crucial in my opinion to, to keep the project running, to identify the problems. And of course, the commitment of the volunteers, the commitment of the partners is what make a project successful. We need to do uh, a commitment and proactivity from volunteers to keep it working. But of course, it should be led by a steering committee with a clear uh, policy. Thank you very much. Yes, sustainability in the long run is very essential. And uh, the points that you have made out made this very clear. Dear Sebastian, can we hear um, your mm -hmm. point of view as well? Yes, thank you. And also again, thank you, Ibrahim and, and Cezin, for your uh, presentations and, and for uh, these insights, which I look forward to going back to and, and learning more about uh, your projects. Um, so yeah, I think I agree with everything that, that Ibrahim just said. Um, uh, in addition, I would say, or, or uh, further supporting Ibrahim's points, I would say that it's also very important to uh, structure the network in such a way from the onset that you allow it to be uh, successful. So you allow it to, you give it this uh, collabor collaborative structure, but you also base it on sound uh, principles um, that will keep it sustainable for the years to come. And so for us, for Urbis, that was uh, uh, flexibility first uh, and foremost, uh, so that we could have the, the freedom of, of growing, the freedom of choosing our software, the freedom of choosing our support company, and, uh, and even the freedom of costs, of determining our own cost and deciding when to invest into improvements and when not. And uh, so having flexibility uh, was key. Um, and, and also having a, a committed uh, uh, uh, well, committee or a steering committee or membership so that uh, where everybody can contribute. But I do agree that um, uh, uh, at least a steering committee needs to provide guidance and, uh, and make proposals and then uh, move the, uh, the network forward. Um, yeah, I think most of the principles that are highlighted in, in the talk also answer the question. Perfect. All of them are noted, I believe, everyone. Dear Cezanne, uh, 
what is your thoughts about this? Uh, as Ibrahim reminds, you know, uh, Henry Ford's sentence is, the quotation is important. You know, working together is success, as he says. First, uh, working together is the critical point. On the other hand, the most critical part is economic uh, con economic su economical support because if Bibliopera project couldn't get support from the Istanbul Development Agency, this project wouldn't have been realized. The first step was solving the economical uh, problems or uh, sources. On the other hand, it is also uh, Koch University Sunal Karach Library's position as a coordinator and initiator is very critical in the project because their efforts in uh, hosting the servers and other technical specifications and their coordination with the technology com uh, company is very critical. On the other hand, the most critical part is uh, working together uh, with other colleagues because you uh, during uh, in a routine daily life we have all you know our responsibilities and test scores to uh, and we are, we, are, we need to uh, complete our responsibilities first and during this routine it is really hard to focus on different topics but by creating small groups uh, uh, this uh, workflow in the collaboration uh, become easier and more efficient way we uh, re, you know since the beginning we are working in social media accounts and it is really very successful because uh, it is coordinated and small groups are in charge with that uh, so um, i ho i hope of, on behalf of bibliopera we, we can sustain this uh, this project and create more smaller groups on under the consort under the collaboration and also it is important to reach more users through this portal thank you very much Susan a lot for your comments and uh, we believe that the audience is also taking important notes um, on what you have stated uh, I have a question in Turkish uh, for Sebastian here uh, uh, Sebastian, you may pass to the interpretation. You may click on the interpretation and click English to hear the question in English. Urbis'ten İtalya'daki tüm kütüphaneler faydalanabiliyor mu? Katılımcı kurumlar harici. Soru Gamze Esenyer'den. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, well, the, the point from the onset of Orbis was actually to provide a network, to create a network of Roman libraries. So we're really focused on Rome. And uh, I think going beyond would be beyond the scope of the Orbis project. And there are very successful uh, Italian, uh, nationwide Italian or one uh, nationwide Italian project. And so we would not compete with that. So we, we're focused on Rome, really. Okay, thank you very much. Um, then I have a question that I was wondering actually during your talk. Is there any um, um, any networks that are establishing in other cities in Italy, taking the example of Urbis? Yes, there are there are others. There is the Iris network in Florence, which is similar to Urbis, and uh, in that it unites uh, foreign and, and similar to Bibliopera, in, in that it unites foreign institutions and local Italian institutions, and they're focused on on the city of Florence. Okay, thank you very the much. First, the first one that comes to mind, I'm sure there are others. But, yeah. mm -hmm. Perfect. And then there is a question for all the speakers. Now uh, we would start with Sezin. Uh, what would you do differently if you were starting from scratch? So Sezin, we can start with you. Mm, it's a really, I think, difficult question. <laughs> but maybe, you know, from if we begin from scratch, I think our aim was really concrete. Our aim was sharing the resources through an online catalog. So it will, it will be the same. Uh, maybe we, I think there won't be too much changes in the concept of the project, but maybe we could think on 
uh, other uh, resources think on how to maybe acquire databases or other uh, digital resources sources on behalf of Bibliopera. This was not in the in the uh, in the context of the project, and uh, and maybe we could also think on the workflows. Uh, mostly focusing on the smaller groups in the beginning. Now, you know, we are uh, trying these processes and uh, learning by trying. So maybe we could have talk on them in the beginning, but the concept of the project would have been remained the same, I am sure. Thank you very much. Dear Sebastian? Um, yeah, it's a very good question. <laughs> uh, I think we... we... I wouldn't say we rushed, we, we had to proceed and we had to find a solution. And uh, so ideally we would have had more funds available to us. So maybe uh, seeking a grant and having a sound uh, economic foundation for the project from the very beginning would have helped. And uh, so, so it, it uh, yeah, it would have helped. It always helps. And, uh, and, and I think we could have, convinced more libraries, talk to more libraries, uh, and perhaps start with more libraries than, than six when we started in 2015. Uh, that's, that's something we did, but uh, uh, of course, and, and uh, but uh, I think having started with more partners uh, would, would have been a good thing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. David Brian, your comments? Yes. Uh... Um, I was trying to think about this answer since uh, Susan started uh, talking, but it is also a very hard question to answer because, but what uh, I can share my reflection about it. So when we start, uh, it's, my, it's our case, uh, I don't know other cases, but when we start a project, we don't think about where we are going actually. We cannot set all the, all the parameters from the beginning. It is an idea and we have proactive people working and the idea is small and it grows. And so when no one knows where it will go, so we started received as a, an idea of, okay, the libraries are closed now, what we should do? We should start providing some resources. And then it grew, People, it was more successful. We start introducing new ideas. And then we said, why we don't apply for a funding from uh, European Union? But we are limited by the people who can join. So maybe what we can do differently is getting more people in, but the fund is only for European institutions. So we were limited by this. Uh, by, by this. So uh, I don't want to talk too much, but the main point is when we start a project, we don't know where we are heading. We, we have the idea, it, it is a big idea. We don't know if we can implement it uh, to the full or, or it will be successful or not. So I don't know if this will answer the question, but uh, I'm just sharing how the process went through. Thank you very much. And this question was from uh, Chi Dam Yildirim. I forgot to mention the name before. And now uh, there's another question from Arturo Chiman. Dear panelists, thank you for your valuable presentation. I may ask my question to all the panelists. What is your main priority about sharing the resources? What is the key component of the resource sharing? So dear Ibrahim, we can start with you, I believe. Uh, okay, so the, uh, the main priority about resource sharing and what is the second part? Uh, what is the key component? Okay. Uh, key component of the resource so, sharing. So uh, I, I guess uh, Ertu Grul and myself, we, we are resource sharing librarian. We know that resource sharing is geared by uh, the willingness to share our, our resources, the willingness to help. So the priority is to help people. Uh, we need to help them so they can help us back. Uh, and the thing that uh, most resource sharing librarians are uh, are very critical about is copyright restrictions and what we can share and what we cannot and where we can share and where, when not. So I think uh, these are the main priorities. Uh, uh, resource sharing librarians are service librarians. They, are, they, have, they are, have proactive uh, characters that they would like to share to help other people. And this is a key, key component. Uh, also, uh, we, we have to deal with uh, a lot of uh, of copyright restrictions. So this is the main point. Thank you very much. Dear Sebastian, for your, for this, or this yeah. network. 
Um, it also goes back to the previous question, what would I or, or we have liked to do more perhaps that is actually have a resource sharing component. We don't currently really have a, a, an official res re resource sharing component. There are many reasons to that. Uh, some libraries don't allow their books to uh, to leave the premises, and uh, uh, there's always copyright, of course, that is of concern. But it's mostly also cost. That's really the uh, uh, the limitation for us. So uh, being able to share more than we're currently doing uh, in a more organized way would certainly be a, a component of Orbis that we would like to implement. Uh, but as always in Orbis, uh, we it's not something uh, that all libraries need to support and participate in. So uh, if, if we are successful or will eventually consider a resource sharing component, it would only be made up of the libraries uh, that want to participate in it. And it may be just a handful, it may just be half of the libraries, who knows, maybe more. Uh, but again, it's very important also that uh, that be very flexible and that there is no mandate uh, in this. Um, yeah, um, did I answer the question? Or? Yes, perfectly. Okay. And uh, dear Susan, uh, your comments on this question? You know, merging virtually and making all collections searchable via the same interface is the priority on behalf of Bibliopera. Uh, of, uh, it presents a comprehensive and huge information source for the users. On the other hand, you know, it avoids to duplicate the uh, it, it is uh, it plays an in critical role in the collection development policy it avoids duplication of the sources in each library and also helps for saving the uh, for more efficient budget management uh, and uh, also circulation is important it pro it enable user circulation among these libraries you know uh, we we save shelf space and uh, enable users to uh, to uh, work in these different library spaces and if, if i may add to my previous comments uh we, we're also hoping to implement greater digital resource sharing maybe that's easier to organize of course by its nature uh than physical resource sharing but that's also a very important component uh that we would like to implement but mm -hmm. I, I fully agree and um, that there are many more opportunities that once we share and work together, uh, a host of opportunities are opening up for us. And one of them is more coordinated collection development uh, with all of the advantages that Sazen just, just mentioned. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think in the resource sharing, open access resource is very, very essential. Well, thank you. Um, we have now a comment in Turkish uh, from a um, from a audience member from Azerbaijan. I would like to read it, and you may pass to the interpretation to English uh, if you want to read the uh, if you want to hear the comment. Sunumlarda her şey çok güzel anlaşıldı. Sorry, sorunun yazarı Narmina Abdullayeva mı? Sunumlarda her şey çok güzel anlaşıldı. Her üç koşuşmacıya teşekkür ederiz. Azerbaycan'da da kullanılması için şu ve bu webinarda öğrendiklerimizden paylaşacağız. Kutuphane haftamız. Herkese kutlu olsun. Thank you very much. Um, and there is a question from Naz Özkan. Um, can you think of any interesting feedback to, to, to your networks? Any feedback that was maybe helpful uh, to for your networks? We can start with Sebastian Herr. Uh, so feedback that I'm taking away from these presentations, uh, focusing on resource sharing. <laughs> uh, Hermes mm -hmm. looks like a, a very appealing project and congratulations on, on its launch and, and success. It's very impressive. And uh, so I think that's really something that for a while we looked at that and we let go because it was simply too difficult to implement. That was before the pandemic. And now with the pandemic, a new platform such as Hermes 
uh, that are open source and and uh, and flexible again. And so we need to, I think, have a second look uh, at resource sharing uh, between Orbis libraries. It's but though it's always important that we don't become too ambitious. That we focus on on goals that we can reach and that are reasonable for the group, and that everybody can can accept and uh, uh, and push forward. So I. Uh, so these are my personal interpretations, but of course I will want to discuss with other co Urbis colleagues and, and not commit the Urbis network as a whole here. Okay, uh, thank you. And dear Ibrahim, your um, comments? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, as I understood from Sebastian that we need to give the feedback of this presentation. Yeah, or, fee or feedback uh, that came to, to your networks, maybe. Okay. We can consider okay. both. Let me start with the first one. So uh, my first impression is collaboration will bring more collaboration. So now see, we were introduced to two different projects and we can have more collaboration with each other. So Sebastian was talking about introducing a resource sharing feature, and this is something he can benefit from the new open source software developed by Hermes. Also, we are trying to uh, create a union catalog in, uh, in, uh, in Hermes, so people can, can search uh, the catalogs of all the libraries before uh, putting an order. And this is what we can benefit from, from Sebastian's uh, project. So collaboration brings more collaboration. Uh, if the question was about the uh, uh, feedback we got from implementing our project, so Hermes was st still in the process of, uh, we are still implementing Hermes, we didn't uh, launch it yet, we need like six months or so, but received was very successful, we received a lot of comments from people from around the world that how we received helped them getting resources they were not able to get from anywhere else, uh, so I hope uh, this answers the question. Perfect. Thank you, dear Susan. Uh, I don't remember any specific feedback, but I can tell that uh, one of the most visible visible outputs of this uh, project is, I think, library tools that we organize every in every library week yearly. Uh, even it is open to the limited number of uh, participants. It it is uh, always we always received. Uh, positive feedback and also uh, these were all very crowded and the particip participants were always eager to learn further about each library all the time. I hope we continue after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. and also since the, the Orbis and Bibliotera networks are very similar in, in Iris and maybe there are other examples such as perhaps in Athens and other places where there's a, a presence of international institutions, um, it would be interesting to explore and see what one uh, network has done that we can learn from or implement. So just having this discussion was already very helpful and is a stimulus to, to look beyond Orbis and and uh, and and open up the uh, uh, horizon or, or look at solutions. Yes, Dear Cezanne, uh, yeah, I can give you a feedback now because <laughs> I, I I saw the project before I was invited to this panel and I was amazed by the interface. It was very beautiful and also uh, uh, the cultural background of Bibliopera is important. Like talk, like having it in for the uh, the historical area of the Oglo. A project like this is very important, and the name is also uh, very representative. So this is my feedback for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from Juliette Rassi. Um, this question is uh, to all of you, but you can question in uh, whichever order you want. Do you have some manuscripts in those projects? So it is a bit depends uh, to the libraries, I believe, but um, if, yeah, uh, dear Ibrahim, you can I start. can answer Dr. Juliette Razi because she's from Lebanon. She's a doctor in history. So uh, for Evmas, uh, the publication we are having is a reflection on the best practices or what should we have, should we do in resource sharing? So we have, we will produce a document to serve as a, uh, to be a documentation of what we have done and to serve as a reflection of the best practices in resource sharing. Also, the training materials are documents, but they are online documents. They will be available on YouTube and on other media, so we can consider them as documents as well. 
If Sezin and Sebastian, you would like to add? Uh, uh, definitely, as you explain, it depends on the collection of each library. When I talk on behalf of Bibliopera, there are 19 libraries in this network, and some uh, some of them, uh, some of uh, their collections includes manuscripts and rare books, but uh, poly usage policies depends on them because Bibliopera provides the metadata of the physical sources and uh, dig uh, dig uh, access to digital objects. Then the user uh, goes to the uh, library uh, to go uh, to see the publication and depends it depends also the policy of each institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I second those comments. We're exactly set up in the same way. And we don't want to replicate uh, individual libraries, digital uh, collections uh, via Orbis, but we want to link to them. I think so. So the libraries, the, the digital collections, archival collections, manuscripts uh, are all included if the libraries have cataloged them and are sharing them in Orbis and, and all of them do. So uh, they are then direct links to the digital objects that are hosted by those libraries. What we can do and what we want to do is find a way of making them more visible. So making the digital resources more visible from the onset and uh, so that people hopefully don't already need to know what they're looking for, but get stimulus and ideas of what is available at the various libraries from the onset. So that's that's one of our goals for, the, for this year. Thank you very much. Now I will pass to another question in Turkish. It's to all of the three speakers. So, uh, the question is from Pelin uh, Karcı. Sunumlar için çok teşekkür ederim. Sorum tüm katılımcılara söz konusu projeler için a genişletmek için ne tür stratejiler uygulanıyor? Can I start? Sezen, we can start with you. Okay. Uh, it is one of the critical issues that we discussed in Bibliopera many times. You know, when uh, we launched Bibliopera, we were several libraries in the same discrete the historical area of Istanbul in Beyoğlu. And our, uh, we are all research libraries. We are all focusing on issues, such uh, topics such as architecture, art, um, urbanism. You know, our research topics are common and uh, then uh, we new libraries were added to the to this network, and you know the name of the collaboration is Bibliopera Beolu Library Library. It is very uh, you know uh, concrete in the title of, of the collaboration. But when we, we received requests, we thought on that because you know there are not many research libraries in Istanbul, and if we avoid uh, adding them to this network will be is is is it something ethical? We always thought on that, but by chance, the new libraries uh, the, which were requested to join the network, most of them uh, moved from other neighborhoods of Istanbul to Beyoğlu district, and then uh, the, this was solved automatically. But uh, we are not sure for the future request, and I think if we receive something. Uh, different we will discuss but we are trying to our aim is collaborating and uh, be, uh, bringing our powerful points together so we will look thank you very much so that was a good coincidence then <laughs> uh, dear sebastian your thoughts yeah um so we're looking for similar libraries then uh uh and for for them to make sense to join so we're not trying to convince every, every anybody we're trying to show the arguments and and then see whether uh similar libraries uh to all of the foreign academies uh that are uh, and some of the italian institutions that are part of orbis uh uh hopefully will be convinced to join to increase their visibility and to be part of a network of of again libraries that are that are similar in the sense that of um 
focus on the humanities, on the history of art and architecture, on the classical studies, preservation studies, landscape uh, uh, studies, and um, so that we can provide better access to each other's collections, to all of our collections, to scholars in Rome. That That's really the argument. There, there is a a local Roman network of public libraries. Uh, there is a, a national network. What we're trying to do is to uh, organize uh, uh, academies mostly, uh, and so advanced specialized um, uh, academic libraries uh, in Rome uh, into one network. Mm -hmm. And so if, if there are any left, and unfortunately, well, there are some, uh, uh, uh, when we, we can contact them, we can reach out to them, we can invite them, uh, provide them with updates. Sometimes it's the economic factor that made it impossible. Sometimes it's a technological factor. And I think keeping the discussion open and, and having those discussions repeatedly uh, might help as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yuri Ibrahim, your thoughts on yes, this? Sure. So um, from a personal experience, the most important factor to grow a network, a volunteering network, is the human factor. For example, in the case of Receive, uh, we relied on the key figures. For example, Peter Bay from Princeton in the United States, he has a lot of, he has a big network. So he was a key person in contacting new volunteers. Also, for example, in Turkey, uh, Ertugrul, from MEF universities, he's a, an active librarian in Turkey and he's uh, respected there. So he brought a lot of volunteers and new figures or new libraries to it. So this was the first step. We relied more on the figures, on, on key people in different parts of the world. Later on in Receive, we decided to create a, an independent steering committee and that some members of the steering committee should be from the volunteers. So they are encouraged to, to, uh, to br bring in more volunteers. Also, uh, uh, every time we meet new uh, new librarians from around the world, we talk about uh, about the initiative and we ask them if you'd like if they'd like to join in conferences, for example, in panels, discussions, in consortia. So uh, the human factors is the most important uh, thing. When we, when they see that uh, some key people uh, in, in the profession are very proactive toward the, an initiative, people are encouraged to join. And this is why it is very successful in Turkey. As I said before, Turkish librarians are the most uh, active people in, in the received initiative because of key people in Turkey supporting this initiative. It's very good to hear that. Um, but the human, human factor is very, very important as you have mentioned. Uh, so we have uh, another question from uh, Filiz Ekinga Floras Mamundi. Uh, she's thanking all the three uh, presenters. And she's asking, when we talk about resource sharing, book sharing comes to mind. What else should libraries cooperate on? And what could they share? This was a question that we briefly um, referred to, uh, but if you have um, any further thoughts. An, an important part of, of working together in, in, in such a network of similar libraries with similar interests is uh, just having the opportunity to, to speak to each other, to see each other, to compare notes um, and to work together again on not necessarily all 22 libraries on one project, but maybe two or three libraries will work together on an exhibition or on an event. Uh, on holding a conference on many different uh, uh, possibilities, including digital ones, sharing collections more digitally, or sharing physical collections. So I think a very important part is having the structure and, and being open uh, to collaboration and then seeing what opportunities arise and what makes sense between diverse partners within mm -hmm. the network. Okay, thank you. Thierry Brian? Yes, uh, if I can add on this, uh, this actually was a topic of the publication. So uh, if you may know that in library, we used to, to name the service inter, inter, uh, interlibrary loan and document delivery services. Then we moved into resource sharing. So we were discussing, should we name it resource sharing or interlibrary loan service in the, in the publication? And we decided more on using resource sharing because uh, librarians they share more they share 
uh, more than documents, they share also their expertise, they, they share their know-how, they share their networks. So we have a lot to share. Uh, one point that I, uh, I missed, I guess, okay. Through the memoir in French. <laughs> so I got lost in my ideas. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, we, uh, we can share a lot more than documents. We share more expertise and this is uh, very important. Thank you very much. And final thoughts, Susan? You know, as I said in the presentation, there is always more than one way to look at an issue or problem. So collaboration is must at that uh, case. And also rather than form-based, I am thinking collaboration in the libraries uh, more information based because you know libraries are the temple of knowledge and this knowledge in uh, you know uh, books resources e-sources uh, all forms in the libraries expertise organization of research related events re uh, collaborative collaboration in terms of research projects in a, in a common topic or common periods in a common region. All of them could be part of this collaboration. And also the dialogue between the librarians and staff is also very critical and efficient because we have chance to ask directly to the colleagues uh, if we have any questions in our mind and it makes the processes easier. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Just just to add, because it just came to my mind, it's very important that all of the, the Urbis libraries, we make each other's libraries more accessible to each other. So that if a mm -hmm. researcher from one of our libraries comes to us and says, I'm coming from this institute, academy, uh, etc., they get easier access than, than others. And uh, so I think that's also an important part, that it's that the point is to, to focus on the scholars and um, and, and to help them. Yeah. Thank you very much for all your uh, very informative answers. And uh, I would like to thank our audience as well for all their questions. This was our last question uh, in the Q&A session. So now um, we will slowly end the talk. Um, I would like to add, thank again, Diri Brian Farah, Sebastian Herrn and Susan Romney for your insightful uh, talks and presentations. And with this event, I think we realize more and more how uh, collaboration is important. And, um, and we know that um, it's very important that institutions individually manages all by themselves, but we see now more that that is not very sustainable and being alone is not enough. So uh, there is power from collaboration. Uh, I would like to also thank our translators who helped us during this talk. And um, yes, so now we came to the end of our event. I wish you all a great library week. Thank you again and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the well organized event. And uh, thank you for Koch University and uh, all the employees there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.